NASA's Voyager spacecraft are among the miracles of science and astronomy. They were initially built to last five years, but strangely, they're still traveling through space today. Recent pictures and data from these spacecraft show that there's still much we don't know. Some current data from the Voyagers are quite eerie and puzzling. Nothing like astrologists used to know. Could this be new evidence of alien activity? Or is it that our universe is changing right before our very eyes? In this video, we will take a look at the new data and images sent back to Earth from the Voyager spacecrafts and the shocking discoveries made by them. The Voyager 1 and 2 are very similar. Each Voyager features a decahedral bus about 1.7 meters long, with a high-gain antenna of about 3.6 meters in diameter mounted on it. A science room is also installed, containing the craft's instruments for imaging and spectroscopic remote sensing. Regarding electric power, the Voyagers use RTGs, radioisotope thermoelectric generators. There are about three of these for each of the Voyagers. The RTGs use plutonium-238, a radioactive substance that gives off heat as it decays. The heat from this radioactive substance is then converted to electric power through a special bimetallic thermoelectric device. Initially, the RTGs could produce 470 watts of 30 volts of direct current at launch, but this value has slowly reduced over the time the crafts have spent in space. Ever since they were launched that year, They've succeeded in taking thousands of photos in space and sending them back to Earth for analysis. But as with most government information, most of the info NASA gets from these crafts is classified, and only a fraction of the data is released to the public. Thanks to the Voyagers, we know how the planets orbit the Sun, the planet rings surrounding them, the size, shape, and nature of high-radiation planets like Jupiter, and of course, the various moons they possess. The Voyager 1 launched from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 41 on the 5th of September 1977, while Voyager 2 launched a bit earlier, on the 20th of August 1977. During this time, the planets were aligned so well that it could facilitate the easy movement of these spacecrafts from one planet to the next. Despite being launched later, Voyager 1 overtook Voyager 2 to get ahead of the solar system and explore previously unventured terrain like Jupiter and Saturn. The probe captured over 4,000 images of Jupiter within just a year of its launch, allowing NASA scientists to create a first-ever time-lapse of this giant planet. It also gave close-up views of Saturn and its four moons. However, Voyager 1's mission ended soon after. Rather than go on to Neptune, NASA decided the Voyager should go to interstellar space. Interstellar space is the space beyond our solar system, otherwise called the space between stars. Our sun is the primary star in our heliosphere, and so the region between our sun's heliosphere and that of other star systems in the galaxy is what we call interstellar space. The shocking data we'll discuss in this video are actually from Voyager 1's stellar space mission. But before diving into that, let's look at one of the most mind-blowing discoveries from these space probes. Fascinating discoveries from Voyager 1 and 2. Have you ever thought of what it would look like to have volcanoes in space? Well, Voyager 1 captured this space wonder on Jupiter not once, not twice, but over a hundred times. You see, Voyager 1 took close-up images of Jupiter's moon. IO images showed that the moon had several volcanoes scattered across it. These volcanoes form due to the intense gravity on this moon. This intense gravity stretches the interior core of the moon, which comprises iron and iron sulfide. As this happens, it generates heat and rock melts into magma, a process called tidal heating. As the rocks melt in the subsurface, they slowly build up pressure before finally bursting out of the moon's surface. Images from this moon can be intriguing and terrifying at the same time. NASA believes that this moon has over 400 volcanoes, with about 150 of them being active. But one volcano caught the attention of NASA more than others, the Loki volcano. This volcano is one of the most potent active volcanoes on the Io moon. And just in case you're wondering, it was named after the god of mischief, Loki. During the 1970s, NASA managed to capture one of Loki's eruptions, 
a powerful one that sent rocks and molten magma hundreds of miles straight into space. But it wasn't its powerful, eruptive ability that earned this moon the name Loki. Instead, it was its mischievous and elusive nature. You see, just like the famous Loki from the Marvel movie franchise, known to be very cunning, mischievous, and unpredictable, this moon's volcano also shares the same behaviors. At first, researchers at NASA could study its pattern and deduced that the Loki volcano erupts every 540 days, equivalent to every one and a half years. But then, another recent study put the schedule at every 475 days. This occurrence has been the thing with Loki. It seems to follow a schedule, but then again, sometimes it goes off schedule, unpredictable and mischievous, just as its name suggests. However, by their calculations, NASA has revealed that the volcano may soon erupt and that this time, it will be the most powerful ever seen. Now we've looked at Voyager 1's fantastic discovery, let's look at Voyager 2. Voyager 2 gave us a chance to study two of the distant planets, Uranus and Neptune. Thanks to data from Voyager 2, astronomers discovered that a Uranian day was just 17 hours long and that its atmosphere consists mainly of hydrogen and helium. The Voyager 2 was the device that made it possible for scientists to learn about the rings on Neptune. Before then, it was all just speculation. Astronomers were only sure about the rings on Uranus, but not on Neptune. The Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft that has encountered Neptune, and the two rings it initially discovered were named Adams and Verrier. The names pay homage to the astronomers John Couch Adams and Jean-Joseph Le Verrier, who devised the calculations for Neptune's exact position in the solar system in 1846. Voyager 2 found three other rings beside the Adams and Verrier rings and about four ring arcs. Ring arcs are clusters of dust and rocks that also seem to form a ring of their own around a planet. They're exclusive to Neptune. Astronomers aren't quite sure why they form or what roles they play, but for some reason, these rock and dust particles cluster together, even though from the fundamental laws of physics, they should be spreading out into outer space. The best scientists have been able to come up with is that the gravitational effects of Neptune's outer ring move inwards, keeping these arcs confined in a ring-like shape. After exploring Neptune, the Voyager 2 headed out of the solar system, but this was way long after Voyager 1 had already made its exit. You see, the Voyager 1 entered stellar space in 2012, while the Voyager 2 entered stellar space in 2018. Voyager 2 is the first and only spacecraft to survey Uranus. In 1986, it discovered 10 moons and two rings on the planet. However, one of the rings on Uranus, the Zeta Ring, caused quite a fracas for scientists, as it seemed to have disappeared soon after its discovery. And so, for a decade, it was as if this ring had miraculously disappeared. But then, in 2022, NASA received a new image of Uranus from the Voyager 2. This image gives the most comprehensive view of Uranus and even highlights the all-elusive Zeta Ring. Thanks to the new data, researchers at NASA were able to determine the distance between Uranus and the rings, which happened to be about 37,000 kilometers. But here's the thing. This ring wasn't the same as before when it was first discovered in 1986. Matthew Hedman, head of observations at NASA, clearly admitted that the ring had changed very noticeably since the two decades they were discovered. For one, its signal is now stronger on NASA's observatory devices. And guess what? NASA has no idea why this happened or how. Could it be extraterrestrial forces at play? Or is it just this planet evolving? The best theory NASA could come up with to try and explain the issue was that seasonal changes may have caused the Zeta Ring to become more noticeable. But still, whatever happened, we don't know. Adding this discovery to the recent data from Voyager 2's twin probe, Voyager 1, would make you question what is out there in outer space that we know nothing about. From Voyager 1, overall, it's been 45 years since the Voyager 1 was launched into space. Before now, scientists usually collected profound data from this probe, but recently, it's been sending some extraordinary data. You see, Voyager 1 has always been the prized NASA asset since it overtook its twin brother and explored space as no other spacecraft had ever done. 
Seeing how the Voyager kept functioning way beyond its predicted lifespan, NASA launched the Voyager 1 interstellar mission in 1990. By the time it had traveled a distance of 6 billion kilometers away from the Sun, it had taken over 67,000 images, feeding NASA with more image data than they could ever ask for. And so, based on this fact, and in a bid to save the spacecraft's power, NASA turned off the cameras on the Voyager 1. Images weren't the only data NASA collected from the Voyager 1 craft. There were still several other ways for NASA to communicate with their probe. Most of these non-visual data came in the form of signals. NASA reads these signals via the help of some big radio antennas, collectively called the Deep Space Network, DSN. By 2012, moving away from the sun at 61, 197 km slash HR, Voyager 1 successfully left our solar system and entered into stellar space, sending more and more signals to NASA as it went. But here's where things get disturbing. Nowadays, the signals Voyager 1 has been sending back to NASA are nothing like they used to be. They're just strange. Most recent signals from the Voyager 1 are undecipherable, even by world-renowned scientists. To make matters worse, current data also suggests that the spacecraft is unsure of its current position or location in stellar space. If it did, such data would have been easily picked up by the Deep Space Network. NASA did a lot of planning when making the Voyager spacecraft, and this is why the Voyager 1 was equipped with a special alarm that should be triggered if the probe ever got lost in space. And so, if it got lost, this alarm would have been triggered. But there's been no alarm so far, despite the confusing signals. If you think the problem might be from the antennas, NASA has also confirmed that Voyager 1 antenna is in perfect health and still in the proper position to communicate with NASA. The craft can still receive instructions and carry them out in space. And so the issue here isn't in receiving data from NASA, but in sending data from space back to NASA. NASA scientists are convinced that the signals Voyager 1 sends do not accurately represent what's happening in space. Moreover, these days, it takes about two days for NASA to communicate to and fro the space probe. And so this begs the question, what's really happening out there with Voyager 1? And why are its recent signals wrong? Has Voyager 1 met aliens? One unique feature NASA put in all their spacecraft, including the Voyager 1, is a special gold-plated disk. This disk carries unique data about humanity, audio and video messages in several languages. These messages were meant to serve as information for any extraterrestrial being or alien the spacecraft may encounter during its space journey. The scientists added several translations to give the aliens a better chance of understanding the info on the disk. After all, no one knows if aliens speak English or Spanish. So far, there's no strong evidence that Voyager 1 has encountered any aliens during its journey. But then again, we can never be too sure. Like many other space discoveries, our dear old NASA may be missing something here. They did miss the galaxies hiding at the edge of the universe until the James Webb Telescope uncovered them. And this brings the probability that the Voyager may have encountered aliens who may have assessed the information stored on its disk and are now trying to reply to us. Some people have even developed theories that aliens may now be controlling Voyager 1. However, NASA has dismissed any alien rumor. According to NASA, Voyager 1 has numerous safety protocols that would have been activated if it ever found itself in danger. So far, none of those protocols have been activated, leading NASA to believe their space probe is safe at least from aliens. But then, if this is true, it makes these strange signals sent from Voyager 1 even more mysterious. NASA never received these kinds of signals when the spacecraft was a bit closer to Earth. The best reason NASA has been able to come up with so far is that this data is just some sort of malfunction in the device. It is usual for any man-made device to begin to malfunction or break down as it nears the end of its lifetime. Voyager 1 has been in space for over 45 years and may only last a couple more. Another thing NASA thinks may be responsible is the distance. Right now, the Voyager 1 is at a record-breaking distance of 23 billion kilometers away from Earth. No other craft has ever gone that far and NASA didn't add the possibility of the craft reaching such a distance during their calculations while building the craft. And so, it is safe to say that Voyager 1's communication system wasn't equipped to relay data from such a distance. 
Nevertheless, these are just theories, and nobody knows what's what. The real plight of the situation is that there's no way to call back the Voyager spacecraft. We just have to keep using it until the batteries run out. The batteries, or RTGs, are expected to last another three to five years, after which the Voyager 1 will be out of commission. Also, there's no way to reach the aircraft, to carry out any checks or repairs. Right now, no craft will ever be able to reach the Voyager 1 in time. After all, it took the Voyager 45 years to get to where it is today. All we can do is wait for a breakthrough, probably sometime in the future, and hope that aliens haven't colonized our dear Voyager 1. But then again, if aliens are sending these signals, what message are they trying to convey? Tell us your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching and make sure to click the video on your screen to watch another interesting video. I'll see you there.